When these talks are recorded and put up uh, in the future, they don't include the introductions. So I need to mention that an introduction was just done, and the and S Stephen Johnson mentioned about joy and me. And last night at the hotel, when we met for the first time again, uh, he said, you're the embodiment of joy. And I have to mention that because it's uh, totally has to do with my talk. So I have three intentions for our time together this morning. One, increase the frequency of your floating. I will tell you why that makes sense, which will support you in increasing the frequency of floating amongst your current and prospective floaters, which will positively impact the world, and yes, positively impact the economics of your float business. What does frequent floating provide joy. That is a bold statement. I believe that it is both bold and true. For a number of years, I have believed that many, if not most, people who float do not understand or appreciate the benefits of frequent floating. What do I mean by frequent floating? I mean floating daily for an hour or so, or at least a few days every week for months or even years. Many of you may already do this, so I am sure you understand what I am saying. For those who do not, and for the people who float in your centers, who have not considered this, I think you will benefit greatly from this discussion. Yes, occasional floating has benefits. But in comparison, frequent floating has significant exponential benefits, which add up to the simple word joy. Joy from less stress, joy from an increased ability to do more, feel more, create more, and overall be more. Be more present, more focused, more serene, more creative, be more effective and productive. Tom Brady says it, Steph Curry says it, Michael Crichton said it to Lee and I over 30 years ago, 
I believe it is now well understood, and I'm willing to bet that once again, Dr. Justin Feinstein will add to our understanding of the science of it during his presentation tomorrow. A couple before I proceed, uh, let me see the number of people who uh, have fro floated pretty much daily for at least a month sometime in their life. Let me see some, let's see, can somebody yell out what percent or how many people are, have their hands out? 15 or 20 out of a couple, couple, couple hundred? Okay. So a couple of things are necessary to increase the people who float frequently. By the way, thank you for your input. One of those is overcoming the belief that floating is an elective that we do after our regular chores in life get done. You know, we float when we have spare time. We need to get people to see that floating is not an elective, but an imperative, an essential component of a more joyous life. From this perspective, floating does not consume time. It actually saves and even expands it. The time we have available to focus on what matters most. Another challenge is better communicating the benefits of frequent floating. Since John Lilly suggested we not program people, we merely described the activities of floating and then let people get whatever they got. From the early days, Lee and I would describe how to minimize fears and deal with the logistics of floating. Shower, get into the tank, leave the door open if you want to be more comfortable, come out when the filter gets turned on, shower again. But we avoided guiding people in how to make the best use of their time in the tank, other than let whatever happens, happen. Said simply, we took a very passive view of float preparation, which could be captured as less is better. I am now saying, seeing we may have missed out on ways to help people get maximum benefit from their time in the tank. My new view is that we could better serve our current and prospective floaters by providing them with some very compelling reasons to float that will increase the benefits they receive, yet doesn't program them as John Lilly warned us against. And I would love your feedback on how these resonate with you. Here are three compelling benefits we can provide floaters. Managing the mental chatter when they float. Using the tank as the greatest problem-solving environment ever invented. 
strengthening our relationships with ourselves, with others, with the past and the future. Let's take these one at a time. Regarding mental chatter, a study mentioned in the 2018 book Altered Traits by Daniel Goleman and Richard Davidson says we spend 47% of our time with our mind filled with mental chatter. This chatter distracts and interferes with our ability to concentrate on things that require our focus. From the old passive, no programming perspective, we might encourage people to let whatever happens happen. Our new approach could be to offer up that when floating, rather than trying to get rid of or avoid this mental chatter, we could choose to be conscious observers without succumbing to or getting sucked into random spikes. We could therefore select from the chatterbox of specific issue and dedicate time to process it with the intention of finding the source or identifying a potential resolution. We could ask ourselves, is there an incident from the past that needs to be reflected upon? Is there something in the future that needs to be planned or committed for. Over time, floaters can gradually work through these chatter spikes. And with regular and consistent practice, the intensity of this chatter will decrease, resul resulting in increased joy. To take, take things to a whole other level, those of us who meditate find there is no environment more conducive to achieving an optimal meditative state than floating. Again, from altered traits, the authors cite hundreds of high quality studies done before 2017 on meditation. Done properly, it results in not just temporary skills, but permanent ones. Hence the title, Altered Traits. As proof, researchers found that people doing even a small amount of concentration meditation for two weeks before graduate college entrance exams scored significantly better than their peers. So meditating while floating enables us to readily and easily enter an altered state I call the heart space. I could spend hours on this alone, but for the sake of this conversation, <coughs> excuse me, let's understand the heart space as being open, present, and connected to life's higher and greater entities and spirits. The more I touch the, this heart space, the more my life has been blessed with things 
showing up when needed. People, answers to problems, new ideas coming to mind. This single item alone would make all the time and money spent floating worthwhile, even if I got none of the other results. When Stephen Johnson introduced me this morning, he mentioned joy. When he saw me last night at the, at the hotel, he said, you're the embodiment of joy. And what I'm talking about today in the talk is joy. Spirit brought him saying joy and me talking about joy in during the talk together to show how touching the heart space creates what's needed so that it doesn't take time, but it gives time. It gives us what we need. In addition to the Altered Traits book, another amazing book on meditation I recommend is Shinzen Young's The Science of Enlightenment. Okay. That's it on compelling reason number one regarding mental chatter. Compelling reason number two. The tank is the best problem-solving environment ever invented. Again, rather than simply floating to relax or chill, life is full of projects, problems, and opportunities to explore. Let's position the tank as the perfect place for doing real work without the incessant inputs and interruptions life presents. Without distractions, people can zero in on whatever they choose. They can pick it in advance or be guided to allow for something emerging while floating and then choose to work through it. They can focus on the article they have been writing, the app they have been building, the presentation they have been crafting, the ball they have been shooting, throwing, or kicking. They can ask for help in solving the problem. They can summon whatever spirit would be helpful or simply trust the heart space to provide what they need. Let the float solution provide solutions. Of course, not all problems will be easily solved. In fact, there are times they discover the problem they thought they had is actually something else. When designing the new tank model I just finished, I had been struggling with some sound and lighting challenges for years. Being a perfectionist can be a real pain in the ass. Lee, al Lee always thought so. But I still haven't invented a tank that will get me over that issue. I had been trying to find a mechanical 
solution to one of a particular lighting issue, but instead I was able to find an electrical solution for the device that worked much better. Happy to give details to uh, any of you geeks out there, but I won't bore you all with details up here. For the 10 years before building the first tank, I was hooked on the idea I needed to settle down and find a wife and get married. That this would fill some happiness or self-worth hole. It was painful. I was very shy and did not know how to meet people. Soon after I designed and constructed the first tank prototype and started floating, I realized I must be trying to solve the wrong problem. There was no hole to fill. I was okay and I could bring joy into life rather than seeing it outside myself. I relaxed, became at peace, and let things happen. Over the next couple of years, I enjoyed my relationships, and then I found my partner, Lee, who was destined to do the float business with me. Had I stuck with the previous orientation, I would not have noticed or been open to Lee. I would have been seeking to complete some check list and would not have been present with her. We decided we wanted to be together all the time, so we quit our jobs and started Samadhi Tank Company full time. I can't imagine this happening had I not been floating. Compelling reason three, strengthening our relationships to ourselves, others, the past and the future. There is no question, floating can be relaxing, restful and restorative. I imagine you would agree that managing metal, mental chatter and meditating into your heart space will improve our relationships with ourselves. And being in good relationship with ourselves positions us well for improving our relationships with others. As a matter of fact, working on the mental chatter and doing the meditation and consistently touching the heart space all have the accumulative positive effect. Doing this consistently can help us establish a new baseline for our emotional state. One brief word about fear, because I know this is something we all encounter, especially with new floaters. The simplest way I believe we can address this in the context of strengthening relationships is to let people know it is perfectly natural for some concerns to arise when doing something new for the first time. This is something everyone experiences at different times when they're doing something new. Of course you're afraid. It would be surprising not to be. Leave the door open if you want to be more comfortable. You will find this will likely dissipate 
and you can move on to even bigger challenges. In terms of our relationships with others, it is not unusual for upsets to arise in relationships. We can find ourselves irritated, frustrated, even hurt or betrayed. The tank can be used in so many different ways and without telling people what they should do, let me tell you something I have done that I have found very useful. Here are some simple relationship questions I have reflected on while floating. What is upsetting to me about this relationship? Is there anything that happened which I need to forgive or apologize for? With this person or group, what am I committed to being or having? What offer, request, or promise could I make to them or myself that would be consistent with my commitment? That's it. We're not aiming to psychoanalyze or put people on a couch. But it gives people a very simple construct for working through issues that we all have from time to time. And finally, our relationship to the past and future. Too often, we find ourselves thinking about some event 30 years ago that lives as a magical moment. Or some ish incident we wish would have taken a different turn. A friend told me of his relative who still carries around a photo of a Ferrari he owned 40 years ago that was taken away during a messy divorce. We may laugh, but many of us have some version of that Ferrari we carry around. <coughs> An other aspect of frequent floating is that other modalities showed up that helped make my life more enjoyable. These include diet, health, homeopathy, biogeometry, radionics, raising food, deep tissue bodywork. I do not have time to go into these, but they have all influenced my life. This is how I think about frequent floating and how it has brought more joy to my life. I hope you appreciate what is available by frequently floating and feel able to communicate that effectively to your floaters. This can open up opportunities for different offers to your clients. I will leave it to you to explore the ways to package this. By taking the opportunity to expand our consciousness and gain the benefits of frequent floating seems like an opportunity for all of us that we should not miss. The purpose of all of this really has but one purpose, to quiet the mind so we frequently enter the heart space. Entering it frequently produces the time-saving effect of pulling to us the life we want and love. I think everyone here knows that I love to do what that 
what I love to do in life is design. I have spent a good part of the last couple years designing the best tank that I possibly could, that I help, that I hope you will find is as great as I do. I'm 82 and I started floating more than 50 years ago. I have done everything I can to design this tank to last that long. This tank is unique in that it is the only tank that will allow you to make the air quality and solution temperature absolutely perfect just for you. Since different people need different adjustments in those two qualities. If you're going to float frequently, you will want the air quality and the solution temperature absolutely perfect, which is what we at Samadhi have worked towards for all these years. If you see me this weekend, I may be able to get you the best gift you can possibly have by this Christmas. I wish to leave you with an important question. Could I receive even more benefit from floating more frequently. Bless you all.